All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at that continued storminess out west, as well as multiple days of severe weather in the eastern United States that we are expecting at this point, as well as a big pattern switch that could bring some colder air into the eastern United States, at least briefly. <music> Anyways, before I get into this video, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. Let's get straight into things, and first things first, we're taking a look at our current radar imagery, and as you can see, there's a lot going on. We have basically storminess for the western, I would say at least half or two-thirds of the United States going on at this point. Now, we expect continued snowiness pretty much all around for these regions. We also do expect some severe weather for multiple different days in this region. We'll talk about that. The Storm Prediction Center has kind of specified that at this point. We also have a bit of snowfall going on up here for the northeastern United States that we'll need to take a look at in just a moment. Now, let's zoom into the northwest real quickly. And as we can see, we have plenty of snowfall actually coming down, even for some of the lower elevation regions. And what's weird is at this point, it's kind of wrapping around and heading southward. Usually these storms head in directly from the west on shore like this. But no, they're actually heading kind of like this as, as of this point, uh, which is quite interesting. But we're seeing a, a pretty big pocket of snowfall that's taking place in this region. Uh, and then also uh, over here as well, we've seen quite a bit of snowfall also. Obviously, the valley here in California has been seeing rainfall. Uh, but any of these kind of hilly regions around this horseshoe pretty much has been seeing that snowfall. All right, now let's take this a little bit further eastward here, and we're going to take a little bit of a wider view, obviously. Now, we can see that there has been plenty of this snowfall taking place here, uh, and this has been basically because a low-pressure system has moved up like this, and it's going to take a bit of this track, and what we're seeing is uh, the snowfall on the northern end of this where that cold air is because that arrow down here, this one that I drew, is basically where the jet stream is as well. So we have colder air to the north of it and warmer air down here to the south of it. And that's why we're seeing rain down here. This has been the trend all winter long. We've been seeing this uh, and it's no surprise that it's continuing at this point. Now we're going to see more storms move in and take about the same track like this. What ends up happening actually uh, is what we're going to see is, is these cold fronts develop to the south of that low pressure system. Uh, and we're seeing this warm air rush in, also humid. Uh, and that's why we're going to see these severe weather threats because we've been seeing so much warm air up here. And then this cold front is going to push through as well and kind of meet up with that warmth. And in these regions is really where we expect that severe weather. Uh, and we're going to have to watch very closely for that. Uh, speaking of severe weather, it's not quite severe, but we do actually have some heavy showers and possibly thunderstorms taking place in this region. Uh, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma City, well, oh, well, Oklahoma City, but Oklahoma, the state as well. It uh, looks like all of these regions have been seeing quite a bit of heavy, heavy rainfall, possibly thunder in there. You'll have to let us know, though, if you live in that region. Let's take a look at that snowfall taking place in New England as well. We've seen a bit of a low pressure system. It's about south of the screen, but it's moving in like this. Um, we've seen some wintry weather trying to take place in this region. So we've seen maybe... I've heard maybe about an inch in some of these regions in here, um, maybe less for most regions. It's been a very light snowfall event. This this winter has been really quiet for a lot of the, well, obviously the whole eastern United States, but especially up here in the New England states in the northeast, you do expect to get a lot of snowfall, and they just have not seen that thus far. Now let's go ahead and move on and take a look at some of that model guidance. Now, there's a couple things to watch for here, and obviously one is that continued snowiness and storminess moving up like this. Uh, the next one is going to be that cold front moving through, which is going to cause two things. First off, severe weather possibly down here. Well, not possibly, most likely at this point. And then also a big pattern change that will bring colder air to these eastern regions as well. Uh, so we're going to be watching for all those things as we play this out. So first off, uh, as we move into 2 a.m. on Wednesday, we see this storm actually moves in a little bit more like this, and this possibly brings some snowfall to these regions a little bit more than what we've really seen for the most part so far this winter, but that's really going to break up eventually. Now, we can see this storminess beginning for these regions. We're going to have to watch closely for this, and I'm going to move actually to our NAM 3 km model here real quick so we can get a little bit of a closer view of what we're looking at here. So let's go to the southeast region real quickly here. 
There we go, perfect. Okay, let's move on to our composite reflectivity. This is really a simulated radar, basically. Uh, and we can see a lot of that storm is developing through the afternoon. And, and when we look at the cape, let's take a look at that cape real quick. So look at this cape, we can see that through the afternoon, this really spikes in there. And, and we're seeing 1000 plus amounts throughout all of these regions, uh, and even 2000 plus amounts in a lot of these regions in the yellow. Uh, and that's going to be sufficient for that severe weather. Uh, and we can see composites like our supercell composite, significant tornado parameter looking moderate. Uh, and then the shear, the problem with the shear is I'm mostly worried about these northern regions. I'm really worried about everywhere, but these areas have higher shear. Um, and this will actually move further southeast throughout the evening. Uh, but it's the, it's the supercells that develop in this region uh, that I'm going to be mostly worried about because that shear is going to be very, very elevated. Um, yeah, right around that time frame. Uh, the browns and the reds up here especially. But really, I mean, the... The possibility for tornadoes is there for all of these regions, and I do expect an upgrade from the Storm Prediction Center, actually. Um, speaking of the Storm Prediction Center, we'll look at that severe weather outlook real quickly. Right now, we have a slight risk in this yellow region and a, and a marginal risk here in this dark green region. As we take a look at the individual risks, though, wind, uh, we see a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the brown, and then a 15% chance there within the yellow uh, usually we see an elevated wind and tornado risk in these high shear events. And as we look at hail, uh, we'll actually uh, we'll also have a 5% and then a 15%. This is pretty rare this time of year. Uh, usually wind and tornadoes are a little bit easier to come by in the winter than hail is. Uh, just because hail you know, is considered to be a very warm weather, severe weather type. But we are taking a look at a 15% chance of hail within 25 miles of a given location. At this point, the tornado risk is 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the green, and then a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the brown. But the Storm Prediction Center has indicated that they are considering adding that 10% chance within 25 miles of a given location there, most likely in the northern regions of this brown area, so something north of here probably. Um... And they've also considered adding the hatched area as well. Uh, so a 10% with hatched is what they're considering at this point if the model guidance continues to look worse and worse, which is looking fairly likely at this point. Let's move back to our model guidance here and let's go ahead and take a look at a national view again and let's move on to our European model again and continue on with this. So we see, as we continue on, another major winter storm develops in here. It's going to take a track likely like this. We see tons of snowfall building in for the Rockies and the western United States as a whole. This is by the 31st. That's going to be Friday. And by the time we reach about uh, January 1st, 2022, Saturday, uh, we will see a, a storm moving up like this, bringing snowfall, some frozen precipitation in general, icy, sleet type stuff. But a lot of rainfall in this region as well. Potential storminess um, down in the southeast again with this one. Especially as this cold front develops there. I'm watching for this. This is going to be the first in through the second or Saturday in through um, Sunday here. I'm watching for this. That's a cold front developing there. Somewhere in there. Getting shoved like this. We do see some snowfall behind it for sure. But also some very, very potent cold air. And that actually moves through even the southeast here. Uh, by the time we're reaching uh, about the morning hour of Sunday, January 2nd there. This is when a lot of that cold air is actually in this region. And we actually see quite a bit of warmth moving into the west. So we finally get kind of a, a cold in the east, warm in the west type pattern by this point. And as we move this along, you can see that sticks around until about Monday afternoon, January 3rd. Again, it could be very brief is what I mentioned in the beginning of this video. And by Tuesday, things begin to look a little bit more flat. We have another winter storm diving down like this this time because we do have that warmer air moving up like this. The jet stream is looking a little bit like this. So the storm wants to follow this track. But what we end up seeing happening uh, is we get a ridge to develop in the east by the time that storm is trying to move through. So we see this southeast ridge really building in. And the storm ends up taking a track like this because the jet stream kind of changes course ahead of it. Um, we see that cold air dive back in behind it. Now, keep in mind, this is pretty long range. So we we feel fairly confident about the cool down starting 
uh, towards the end of this month because that's only a few days away. Uh, but this warm up at the end, um, you know, our confidence is more low to moderate on this one. Um, although with how this winter has gone, it does increase my confidence a little bit just because I know that that's what the trend has been. Uh, but really, it is pretty long range. And there is still a possibility that cool down could last longer. But, you know, how have things gone? Let's think about it because <laughs> that does play a part in things for sure. Now, total snowfall through the next 10 days here is looking uh, fairly significant, obviously. Let's move. First off, we'll take a look at the east here. Uh, we do see a couple of uh, moderate to major snowstorms up here. So we do have uh, two to six inches there in the blue, uh, six to 10 inches in the purple, and then 10 inches plus in the pink. Uh, but it's really sad to see the lack of snowfall up here for the New England states. I really hope things turn around for you guys uh, in, in the months of January and February, obviously. Now, we still expect a ton of snowfall out west here. Again, two to six in the, in the blue, six to 10 in the purple, 10 inches plus in the pink, or I guess 10 to 20. We see these kind of pastel blues there. That's where we're 20 to about 36. And then these pastel purples are 36 inches plus. Uh, but we can see some of those maximums, 48. 83, 47, 37, 28, 35. So tons and tons of snowfall expected. A maximum of 166 inches. This time, I think this is actually up here in coastal Canada. Uh, I think the United States is not expecting 100 plus inches any longer, which is uh, a big change from how things were going. Now, there's two more severe weather things I need to talk about with you guys because we do actually have, uh, first off, a, a day four a day four threat here. We have a 15% chance of severe weather within that yellow region there, mostly for Arkansas, but also for a bit of Louisiana, Oklahoma, Texas, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Missouri as well. Uh, we're going to have to watch very, very closely for that. Uh, but the next day, we also have a much larger 15% chance risk here for portions of Arkansas still. Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Georgia, and a little bit of North Carolina as well in, in the very, very western tip of Virginia there. Uh, where we have another 15% chance risk there. So, so odds are at this point that we will have a slight risk of severe weather also on Friday, December 31st, and then also on Saturday, January 1st. And I wouldn't even be surprised if on day six, uh, if, we see, if we end up seeing severe weather in uh, the region further east than this as that cold front moves out. This is all with that cold front that we watched that moves basically from the central United States all the way to the east coast as that cool down moves in and with how much warm air and humid air has been in place for the southeast it's going to be very favorable as that strong winter cold front moves through it's going to be night and day the contrast between that cold air and the warm air that's been in place is going to be very very uh intense so we're going to have to watch very closely for this because this is a unique setup these winter severe weather threats are very very unique and they usually feature very high shear because the winter time has a lot more shear than the spring, the summer, or the fall. So uh, there's a lot of parameters in place and we're gonna need to watch all of it over the coming days. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, for today's confidence tab, we're actually at a five out of six today. We've moved up a little bit because a lot of the things I've talked about today are, are in the shorter range and just I'm a lot more confident in. Uh, the only thing I'm not really confident in is that very, very late, uh, term warm up that's possible just because it is very far out uh, but I do feel like I'm at a five out of six today with what I have talked about no comment of the day today um, but for today's patron highlight of the day I want to thank you all for supporting the channel but especially our platinum patrons Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry LePan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well I would also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kudalas, a cat bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Bill Dallas, Gary's, and John Kulisi. Also, I would also like to thank our channel members, cat bite, Stephen Finn, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.